Very neat. Annie here. I'm participating in this year's Pagan YouTube Challenge or something like that. I'll mention it in the remarks below. It's a wonderful idea that our friend Annika proposed in the YouTube Pagans Facebook page, which is a topic each week that we can use to uh, discuss and re-engage and be part of the wider conversation, which is something I had been hoping to do. You know I've been absent from YouTube except for the tarot videos, which even those, because of some challenges in my life, slow down. Hopefully they're about to begin back up again. And I wanted to re-engage with the community. So this was a great opportunity for me to look forward to. I used to love it when I was on Pagan Perspective, that every week there was a new topic I could consider and think about and share. But sometimes it was more about what I thought about on my own that brought me the greatest joy. The topic, this first topic of the year, has to do with how we found our path. And I know some of you know that I'm not a fan of the word path and whether we're on our path or strayed from our path. And it came in time in my life. It wasn't something that I thought of early on, but I can look back now, I'm 62, and realize that I'm where I am because I had a life's path. Did it change? Did it wander? Did it come to crossroads? It did. But there has been, I can look at it now, and see kind of a contiguous flow, um, a direction, a momentum that got me where I am. I've always been on the path is what I would say. But something had to set me off on this path that we share in our pagan community, what we have in common, pagan to pagan. And we tell our stories about how we began this journey. Most of us didn't grow up in the environment that we had pagan or heathen families and grew up that way, most of us came to it somehow. What a different story our children raised in our families might be telling. It won't feel like a separation from family or past or a movement forward that something stopped and started all over again. Their stories might be very different than ours. My story began when I was 18 years old. Now before that, I'd explored alternative religions. I, I, I didn't connect to the religion of my family, Christianity, not in a bad way or a terrible way. I just, I found no comfort. I found no sustenance. And even as a teenager, I questioned it. I love studying the religions of the world and, and did so fervently. I studied a lot of mythology and gods and goddesses, historically and literary. I didn't have any sense that they were being honored in the contemporary world, though. There wasn't anything that said that to me. And then I had a very difficult time when I was 18 years old. It was a very brief, very short, very violent marriage. And I came out of that marriage by ending up in the hospital for months to recover from of the abuse and then into therapy and into a woman's shelter afterwards. And this is the very early 70s. So the quick story of how I came to a path that you and I may think is shared, which is pagan if we describe it that way, whatever our labels are that we find we have in common. When I was in therapy after that experience, my therapist, a wonderful man, said he had some women he wanted to put me in touch with. All he knew is that they had a woman's group and he put me in touch with them, and my life changed. Because what I found is a group of women that were honoring the sacred feminine. Now, this is before I'd run into, and maybe it was even before, considering the timing of it, before there actually was a Wiccan influence in America, because we're talking very early 70s. And these women were women of all different faiths. And what they honored was nature is sacred, and goddess in the sense of the goddess within and the sacred feminine. We didn't worship goddess by name. We studied goddesses by name. And my heart just opened up to the unconditional love that I felt within that circle from the women, from the sense of greater divinity that just might be female, and also a sense of what within me connected to that. 
And time went by, <coughs> excuse me, and it was beautiful. And I always say it saved my life in more ways than I can probably ever give credit to, even with the hindsight I have now. But it just didn't seem complete to me. There was, and it was the times, and it was the experiences of these particular women who had had, like my story, a lot of negative engagements with the patriarchy. But it began to feel to me, especially when I looked at how much I loved my brother and my grandfather and the dear men friends that I had in my life that I loved and trusted explicitly, regardless of the negative experiences I had. It felt to me one-sided view of what the divine might be. I never lost the connection to the earth-based aspect of it, but I began to feel that it was limiting, in some way limiting like seeing God as the strict grandfather of my early growing up years. I didn't have a word to go with that because once again, I had no experience of what might be beyond what I was experiencing. But I knew that I had to move away from that group of women. And for me, what happened is in a relatively short period of time within the same year, I met my first, and it was at a reading room in a metaphysical shop. And metaphysical shops were really new in the area where I live at the time. But it was like incense and tie-dye and sitar music. It was that kind of metaphysical shop. And I met a couple that were there. They taught, but they taught things like meditation and visualization and some chanting. And it was mostly uh, Eastern chanting. It ends up that they were priest and priestess to a Wiccan circle. And this is really middle 70s, so early on when there weren't a lot of those kinds of things going on here. But I live on the East Coast, <clears throat> not far from New York City, so there's a lot of influence of the traditions as they were coming over to the States and as they were being taken in by Americans. And that really is I'm going to what I'm going to offer, is the way I came to this path, the path that so many of us share, not specifically in tradition or practice, but in the sense of the earth is sacred, our connection to the earth, and that we have the power of connecting to deity in whatever way we choose. It could be contemporary, it could be a connection to the old gods that move either through something contemporary or connected to something very, very ancient that we're trying to reconnect to. And that is what set me on at least connected me to the energy that would continue without fail to flow through my life. And so that's what I offer as how I came to my path. In that period of time, discovering that women got together and they honored the sacred woman, the sacred feminine in each other and within their selves, how that connected to the natural world around us, how it fed our energy in group and in community. And then the energy that then took me, the flow that took me from that to discovering, because it was something very new to consider, the sacred couple, the sacred marriage, and all the possibilities of what that might mean in a spiritual, an energetic, and then a pragmatic living life kind of way. That's the energy that has been the flow, the energetic flow of my life. And it's the energy that has brought me into contact. With so many of you, whether I know you in person, through other groups, or here on YouTube, the commonality we have of what we join into at an energetic level, even if it's not, that we share the same specifics of belief or practice. So that is what I wanted to offer on how I came to my path. It's how I joined into some greater energy, some flow that has carried me forward without fail the length of my life so far. I wish you all mirth and reverence. Merry part.